In this example, I'll demonstrate how you can use Salamander to build a structural model of a simple portal frame shed. As a starting point, I've drawn four curves in Rhino, which represent the centre lines of my main portal frame. These are on a layer named Portal Frame. At the moment, this is just regular straightforward Rhino geometry, but we can turn these into salamander elements that can then have structural data attached to them using this tool over here, Convert Rhino Geometry to Salamander Elements. I'll click that button. It then asks me to enter the geometry to be converted. This tool will take in curves and convert them into linear elements, and it will take in meshes and surfaces and convert them into panel elements. I will select the four curves that I created earlier. I'll then hit return. It will convert those into salamander elements. And now when I select them, some information about those selected elements will appear in the salamander sidebar. So I can see, for example, that, that is element one, that is element two, and so on and so forth. Because this object started out on a layer named Portal Frame, Salamander has automatically created a new section family named Portal Frame and assigned it to those elements. We can see the information for that section profile just below the Elements section. At the moment this is blank, but we can assign some geometry to this section using the drop-downs below. First of all, I'll select a type. I'll choose Symmetric Eye Profile. And we can then choose from the catalogue a section within that group. Once I've selected a section, I'll see a preview of the geometry in the sidebar. And also, a 3D preview of that applied to those elements will be shown in the main Rhino viewport. As well as the linear elements which make up the frame itself, Salamander will also have automatically generated nodes at the start and end of each of these elements. When you select these, their properties will appear in the sidebar as well. So that our structure doesn't fall through the floor, I'm going to pin the base of each side of the frame. I can do this by selecting those nodes, and then in the sidebar, checking the directions that I want to have fixity. In this case, I'll pin them, so I'll select the X, Y, and Z directions to be fixed. Salamander will create 3D icons to represent the fixity conditions at each of those nodes. This, as well as the section display itself, can be toggled on or off using this set of buttons at the bottom of the sidebar. Now that I have my first portal frame set up, I'll copy it to create another one. I can do this just using the standard Rhino copy command. All salamander data attached to these objects, such as the section family on these linear elements, and the fixity conditions of these two base nodes will also be copied across. Now that I have this, I'll draw in some roof purlins in between these two frames. Just before I do this, I'll use the standard Rhino divide command in order to create some setout points along each of these elements. Now to create those new roof purlin elements themselves, I'll use the create linear element tool. This allows me to simply draw out straight linear elements between two points. By default, this new element will not have any section applied, but we can change that by going to the sidebar, looking in the element section, and then in the section drop down, selecting either an existing section family or clicking on new to create a new one. I'll name that new section family Perlins. and I'll assign it an eye profile from the catalogue. To create the rest of these purlins, I'll use the Create Linear Element tool again. Most Salamander commands, when you're using them, have a set of options which will appear in the sidebar. One of the options of this Create Linear Element command allows you to specify the sections that these newly created elements will have. I'll select the Perlin section family, and now when I draw out new elements, that section will automatically be applied. 
I'm using the standard Rhino objects maps to point and perpendicular in order to draw out these purlins. Next I'll set the release conditions on these roof purlins. I can do this by selecting the purlins, going over into the sidebar and expanding the start and end sections. This will let me see the information for the start and end of those elements, including the releases. So that I don't have to set this for each one individually, I'll select all of the purlins at once. Salamander will automatically place its objects into a special section of the layer table marked Salamander, and then with its elements separated out on sublayers based on the family that's assigned to them. Therefore, if I want to select all of these purlins at once, an easy way of doing it is to go to the purlins layer, right-clicking, going down to select objects. I can now expand that start and end section and set those releases. So I'll set releases in the XX, YY and ZZ direction at one end, and the YY and ZZ direction on the other. By default, element releases aren't displayed, but we can turn on a preview of them by checking the bottom at the bottom of the screen. Salamander will now display those releases on those element ends. To fill out the rest of my structure, I'll select my rear portal frame and all of my roof purlins, and then copy them a few times to create the full structure. As you may have noticed, now that I've released these roof elements, this is no longer a stable structure. In order to fix this, I'll add in some bracing on these end bays. I want to create a new section for these, and another way that we can create section families is to use this set of buttons on the toolbar. In this case, I'll create a CHS family, and I will call it bracing. Now I'll create some new linear elements, starting with that bracing family, and I'll draw them in in a zigzag pattern in these end bays. Now that I've done this for one side of one bay, I'll mirror this a few times to fill in the other three corners of the building. This is just using the standard Rhino mirror command. I'll need to set the releases on those as well. And there we have our complete structure. As a result of copying around elements and nodes, you may find sometimes that you've got two nodes at the same location. In order to fix this, we can merge these nodes together. We can do this manually by left-clicking on the Merge Nodes button and then selecting the nodes we want to merge. Or we can do it automatically by right-clicking on this button. That will then merge coincident nodes only, so we can select all of the nodes together, hit return, and this will automatically merge any nodes which are at the same location. We can now save out our finished salamander model in various different formats. .s3b is salamander's native file format. This will store all of the information in the model. This data will automatically be embedded in the Rhino file itself whenever it's saved. However, it can be sensible to also use this format to create a full backup of this part of the model. We can also export out to other packages. At the moment, GSA text file .gwa format and robot.rtd format. To write out to RTD, you will need robot installed as it uses the API. GSA files are written out purely as text, so GSA doesn't need to be installed to write them. However, you will, of course, need GSA to be able to open those files. 
If we're writing out to robot, then there's nothing else that we need to do to this model. However, if we're writing out to GSA, then GSA will require that the linear elements will start and end at the coincident points. In other words, we will need to take our long main frame elements and split them down into several smaller elements which start and end at these node points. We can do this just using the standard Rhino split command. We can select that and then select our portal frame elements in order to split them. And then we can select all of the nodes on our nodes layer as our cutting objects. This will then subdivide those elements up and split them at those positions. At the moment, the sections that we can see in Rhino are merely being drawn by Salamander itself as a preview. They don't actually exist as Rhino objects themselves, only the center lines do. This means that if we want to create a rendering of our structure, they won't show up. What we can do, however, is to bake out those element sections as either extrusions and B-reps or as meshes. We can do this by selecting the elements that we want to bake and then using this Bake Salamander Element Sections button down here. We can right click to bake as meshes and we can left click to bake as extrusion members. Having done that, we can now render out an image of that structure. Thanks for listening and happy salamandering.